This video is on simplifying radicals. When simplifying radicals, the easiest way to do this is if you know your perfect squares, your perfect cubes, your perfect fourths, your perfect fifths, perfect any number. Because when you're simplifying radicals, you want to actually simplify it down from the perfect squares or the perfect cubes, whichever one it is. So we're going to first determine what our perfect squares are. We're going to go from 1 through 15 for our perfect squares. For our perfect cubes, we're only going to go from 1 to 7. There are obviously going to be more. You can always go beyond 15, but these are the just ones I'm going to be talking, be using today. Same thing for the perfect fourths, we're going to go from 1 to 5, and perfect fifths, we're going to go 1 through 4. So for perfect squares, what you're really determining is what is 1 squared? 1 squared is just 1. Then we have 2 squared, which is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 64. 9 squared is 81. 10 squared is 100. 11 squared is 121. 12 squared is 144. 13 squared is 169. 14 squared is 196, and 15 squared is 225. The reason we want to know this is because the square root of any of these perfect squares, so the square root of 64, is 8. Because it's a perfect square, we can take the square root of any of these numbers. So as we're doing simplifying radicals, we look for the biggest perfect square that will work if we're dealing with square roots. So perfect squares and square roots go together. Now we can do the exact same thing for perfect cubes. So instead of doing 1 squared, we're going to do 1 cubed. 1 cubed, 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. Then we're going to do 2 cubed. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 cubed is 27. 4 cubed is 64. 5 cubed is 125, 6 cubed is 216, 7 cubed is 343. And we can go further if we want to know the 8 cubed, 9 cubed, 10 cubed, all the way down to 15. So if I wanted to do 13 cubed, that would be, so 13 cubed, if I wanted this row right here, it would be 2,197. That's because I'm doing 13 times 13 times 13. Now again, the reason we want to know this is because if I were to take the cube root of any of these numbers, it would give me this row over here. So we have, if I want to do the cubed root of 216, it would give me just 6. And I could actually put that in my calculator and get 6 as my answer. Because these are perfect cubes, I can take the cube root of it and get a whole number. Now if we continue and I do the perfect fourths. So I will do 1 to the fourth power. Again, that's just 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is still just 1. 2 to the fourth power is 16 because that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. You're doing it four times. So the next one is 3 to the fourth power is 81. 4 to the 4th power is 256. And then 5 to the 4th power is 625. So what we're doing is 5 times 5 gives us 25, times 5 again gives us 125, times 5 again gives us 625. So all of these, they go in order. 2 times 2 gives us 4, times 2 gives us 8, times 2 gives us 16, times 2 would give us this one. Because all we're doing is just, again, we're going in order of how many times we're multiplying them. So we're going to do the perfect fifths. We can do that exact same thing. We have 1 times 1 is 1. Times 1 is 1. Times 1 times 1 is just 1. If I want to do 2 to the fifth, I would do this the first one. So this is 1, 2, because the squared is to the second power. This is 3 because it's to the 3rd power. This is 4th because it's to the 4th power. This will be 5th, the 5th time I have to multiply it. So it's 2 times 2 
is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So 2 to the 5th power is 32. 3 to the 5th power is where I will take this last, this perfect 4th, 81, and multiply it by 3 again. So 81 times 3 is 243. Because 3 to the 5th power is 243. 4 to the 5th power is I would take 256 and multiply it by 4 again. So 4 to the 5th power is 1024. So these are all, these are perfect numbers. So I could take the fifth root of 1024 and get the answer of 4. These are all perfect numbers, so when you take the root, the correct root of them, you'll get one of these numbers in this column because this is the perfect, the, these are what give us our perfect numbers over here. So the way we simplify, and we're going to do some examples, the way we simplify is we actually look for the biggest perfect number that divides evenly into the radicand. So this, I'm going to talk about this. The column, this column that we're going to be talking about is based off of the root or what we call the index. So this number right here is our index. It's the one that's inside the little nook. This is our index or our root because if this is a 3, we would call this the cubed root. If this was a 5, we would name this the fifth root. It's the same word from up here, square, root, cube, root, fourth, root, fifth, root. The number inside the radical is called our radicand. This number right here is our radicand. That's what we are trying to simplify. Now you could have numbers, you could have letters, you could have both, but today on this video we're only specifically focusing on numbers because we're only simplifying radicals themselves, not radical expressions. Expressions are when you have both numbers and letters or just letters. So we're just focusing on just the numbers. Now there is another number that could be on here. It would be out here the number outside of it, which is actually multiplied to the radical itself. This is a radical symbol. Okay? This is not a square root symbol unless the index is a 2 or if there's nothing in the index. So this is not a square root symbol because it can be different types of roots. This is called a radical symbol. So the, if there is a number outside of the radical, it is multiplied to the radical. It's not added or subtracted. This is multiplied. This is called our coefficient. This is called our coefficient because it is the number multiplied to the radical. This number is not inside, so we don't do anything with it until we have simplified the radical. When we simplify radicals, we're going to be able to bring numbers out of the radical, and then we'll multiply it to anything outside of the radical already. So when we are dealing with, if we have a 4 in here in the index, we'll actually look at the fourth perfect fourth column only. And we'll see if any of these numbers will divide evenly into this radicand. So we'll take this radicand and divide it by the largest number possible. So we're going to do some examples of this, and I'll explain how to do that. 